everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new preview to share with you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new 172nd scale Tacom Bismarck Bruno turret. And Bruno turret just meaning it's the B turret, it's the second turret from the very front of the ship right there. But it's the one that's slightly elevated above the front one too, so it's completely different than like what the Yamato turret that we built uh, a couple weeks ago where it was the A turret was all right onto the deck. So a little different look to it and a nice display base inside too. Uh, it's not a ridiculous number of parts in this particular kit, so I think it'll actually build pretty quickly. I do plan on building one of these. This actually is mine right here. I'm keeping one of these. I want to have it to go along with my Yamato turret and hopefully some other ones as they come on down the road. But today we're just going to take a quick look inside, show you all the different parts. They are available in the United States right now. We have them on our website at andyshq.com if you want to check those out right there. So, let's get started. So here we are. Let's take a look at this German battleship Bismarck Turret B, also known as the Bruno Turret in 72nd scale from TACOM. This is actually the second large scale turret that TACOM has come out with. They initially came out with the Yamato with her 18 inch guns. Uh, now that one was actually the very first turret, you know, the A turret on the on the ship, so it rests right on the deck. What I like about this one, right, is this is the B turret, so we get this elevated portion here that lifts the the gun up higher. Now I I have no idea if they would ever do this or not, but what would be really really cool is if. They came out and built the A turret as well with a little piece of deck that you might be able to hook both of these together. And I've got a, just for a second here, pull this over. This is the uh, side of the ship from one of the, the, you know, the 350th scale. And just think about this. If they built this portion of, from like the back of this turret to the front right here and just built all that wood deck, how, what a cool little display piece that would be. On a, on a base with the elevated turret and then the one that's right on the deck. I would love to build something like that. Probably won't ever happen, but a boy can dream, right? Um, uh, now, like I was saying, this is the second turret coming out, and uh, I've also heard rumblings that very, very soon that TACOM will be coming out with a Missouri turret, too. So we'll have our 18-inch guns from Yamato, 15-inch guns from Bismarck, and then, of course, the 16-inch guns from a Missouri class. So they could do anything like New Jersey, Missouri, or any of the other sister ships in that line. So let's pull this apart. It's a, it's a fairly big, thick box, as you can imagine right here. Not a ton of parts, but uh, some really good-sized plastic parts. First thing we're going to look at is the beautiful display base that TACOM has included in here. So they give you this uh, nice molded edge here as you would have normally uh, you know, expect like on a wooden base. But then they've actually put part of the wooden deck around here and then part of the elevated portion of the, the turret here as well. And you can see about the size of it. It's probably about maybe about nine inches across right here. And then with that, we have this portion. Now, I'm not moving this away yet because I want to show you how this is going to go on there. So these are the two uh, pieces of, I guess this portion of it would still be called the barbette. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me down in the comment section down below. But this portion right here will just lock right in just like that. So show you from the side here. And you can see how tall it would be and then plus the turret on top of that. So... Pretty, pretty nice the way that all goes together, pretty simple. Next up, we are going to look at the actual turret. Now this, if you guys watched the video on building the Tacom Yamato, this is a lot, lot smaller turret. And at the very end of this, what I'll do is I'll bring the Yamato turret back out and we'll put this side by side with it so you can see it. That uh, This is like a little baby turret next to that Yamato turret. That thing is massive. But this is still very, very cool. So you can get an idea how this is. There's a top and bottom. And one thing I'm going to point out, I'm going to have to, I plan on building this kit. And when I was talking about the Yamato turret, the, the actual guns lock into place right here. And then you put the blast bags over the front of those. 
And it actually made it kind of cumbersome because once you put the blast bags on, the, the guns are not movable at all. But with that, that ability to, you know, you can see here there's a socket down the middle here that you would think that the guns would be able to be made to be movable. But it actually ended up making the, the blast bags disconnect from the actual turret. So when I actually go to build this one, I'm going to research that first to make sure that this stuff won't make them move. Because if so, I might just leave all the internal parts out and just glue the gun with the blast bag right to the front of the turret right here. Less likely, I think, that it would, would have a problem with it. But that's just a minor thing. I just noticed it on my Yamato every once in a while when you try to play with it. Now we're going to take a look at the barrels. As you can see here, the barrels are two-piece. So you are going to have to deal with a seam that goes down the, uh, the top and bottom of it. Not a huge, huge deal on this particular one. It'd be nicer if it would have been slide molded, but uh, honestly, you glue it together there. It's, it's pretty smooth all the way from top to bottom, so you're not going to have all these little hills and valleys that you need to try to try to sand around. Shouldn't take you too, too much time on that. We've got some of our ladders right in through here. Uh, obviously, you're going to get two of this turret, or excuse me, two of this sprue for the turret because there's two barrels, two 15-inch guns on this one, and both of those are right there. Next up, we have our blast bags. Now, they do give you the ability to have, just like the Yamato turret, the ability of moving the, the guns at a, a, a level or in a very, very elevated type of firing position. So like when it was firing at its distance when it fired on the hood with Prince Eugen, it probably would have been close to that angle because they were really trying to lob those shells really far. So these are going to be, I believe this is the one that's actually going to make it elevated, you know, for firing distance. Then over here we have some of the other parts of it here. These are like a little hatch on the side and it looks like some of the ventilation, some of the other parts here as well. Let you see all those down there. And then finally, we have just this last sprue here. This looks like some more blast bag stuff. I'm not quite sure where this would go. I'll have to look at the instructions for a minute and see where those go. But we have some more of ladders. And believe it or not, guys, that is the extent of this entire turret. So uh, not too, too heavy on the part count. Still some big parts, especially when you get that turret mounted onto the base. We'll also look at some photo etch that is inside here. This looks like this is the railings that go across the top. They're little, little uh, things like if a guy's standing on the top so he doesn't slide off. And some of the other parts on there. Sorry, try not to blind you guys with my uh, lights. And there we go. How about that? That'll give you a pretty good idea what the photo etch is inside there. And lastly, let's take a look at the instructions. And here is the side-by-side -side of the Yamato turret right here with the Bismarck right next to it. And you can see Yamato is pretty large. In fact, uh, I think this one would probably fit right inside of that, no problem. This is what I was telling you about earlier, too, with the, the turret pieces. See how it's very easy because this can go up and down that it wants to a lot of times separate from the, uh, the actual turret. I think it would be better if I pulled those out and then just glued this directly onto the the piece and would probably hold up a lot better and finally we're gonna take a look at the instructions and I think I figured out those two little soft uh, soft skin thing looking things I think those are those those might be covers for like hoses or something if you guys know what those are please go ahead in the comments down below and tell me what those are but clearly it's made out of like a canvas or some kind of you know flexible material the instructions, as you would imagine, there's not a heck of a lot of parts in this kit, so I think it's going to go together pretty quickly. I showed you how, you know, the ring goes inside there. The uh, the rest of those little, like, vents and things all get glued to the outside. And we're not going to spend too much time on this. This is pretty basic. But I did want to show you this. I was looking ahead, and it does have those two little flexible joints inside here that you build up to make the guns move. And like I was telling you, in the Yamato, making the guns move was completely worthless and actually was detrimental to keeping the blast bags on. So when it comes to this, I would either glue these into place permanently so they can't move at all. They're just stuck in that one position. Or even just, I, I don't know if we could leave this out completely if there would be enough glue surface to attach the barrel with the blast bag. 
directly onto the front here? Might be, but uh, when I build that, well, obviously we're going to tackle that when we get to that section of it. And then finally, you see what I'm talking about right here? That if you don't have that little inside circle in there, the gun should be able to just glue right on to that, that little whole edge. But we'll try that out when we actually get to it. And then there are a whole bunch of different paint versions that are all very similar. We've got a gray top, a dark gray top, a multifaceted gray top. And the final one where we have a yellow top turret, which I'm kind of swinging towards that one right there a little bit, or leaning towards that one a little bit, I should say. Uh, something to break it up rather than just a solid gray mass. So, so that's it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at the uh, the new 72nd Bruno turret from the Bismarck. These are, are available in the United States right now. In fact, they're available on our website at andyshq.com. We have them in stock as we speak. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.